Hello everyone, as you can see today, I am wearing my absolute best. Uh, some may say, dressed to the nines, drowning in appeal. He got that shit on. Folks, my attire can only mean one thing. Today, we're gonna be watching the Kids' Choice Awards. My review of last year's awards was met with mixed reviews of its own. Many people wondering why I, an adult man, was reviewing the Kids' Choice Awards. I won't lie, it's a valid question, uh, cause while I feel like my jokes and commentary did have validity, it is, after all, a show for kids, um, so, I feel like I was unnecessarily harsh in all of the wrong places. After all, these videos shouldn't be about hating the Kids' Choice Awards. I, I grew up with the Kids' Choice Awards. You know, these videos should be a fun way to reminisce and, and see how things have changed. That being said, things don't always change for the best. Because this year's awards make last year's awards look like peak children's entertainment. Look, I really want to jump into this, you know, uh, get into the next section, but really quickly, look, hey, I just gotta hey, say- no, your no, time is up. Please, come no, on, bro, it, it, well, it's no, no, please, it's come on. No, can I just no, please, please, no, can I, please, no, please. No, no, Nickelodeon has done a lot of fucked up stuff, and a certain documentary recently uncovered many heinous acts committed by high-ranking staff on set and off, and hey, get this, those acts were committed against children. Among many of the names mentioned in Quiet On Set, most people will probably recognize Dan Schneider, the producer behind many shows from my childhood, like iCarly, Victorious, Zoe 101, uh, Sam and Cat. Unfortunately, the list goes on. However, longtime viewers of the channel will probably remember that Dan Schneider is only one of two recipients of the Lifetime Achievement Award at the Kids' Choice Awards. The other recipient, is Optimus Prime. Will they address this? Will we get a quiet on set segment? Will we get a public apology from all of the alleged criminals in the documentary on the children's award show? Absolutely goddamn not. But the implications of the documentary do seem to weigh pretty heavy on this year's awards. I mean, it is the kids' choice awards. You'd have to try pretty hard not to see the tension there. Additionally, since around the year 2000, the Kids' Choice Awards have always taken place in either March or April. However, this year is the only year that they've taken place in July. As far as I could find, and I, I really did look as hard as I could, uh, no one really knows why the awards were postponed this year. But, judging by the fact that Quiet On Set came out around the middle of March, I feel like it's safe to say that it wasn't purely coincidental. Given this information, we have to wonder why they even decided to go through with it, right? I mean, doesn't this seem like the perfect time to just rest, rethink, and, and come back with a revamped concept in the future? My show. Uh, okay, what, what he said, I, uh, so I wrote all of that. Let's get on with the... Holy shit. Let's get on with the show, folks. Shall we? Sandy, poor girl, what the hell did they do to you? Well, I was going to start off by saying you're probably wondering who the hell in their right mind would accept the hosting gig this year, but I guess you figured it out. You know what, guys? I feel like now is as good a time as any. Let's, uh, let's get this going off right, shall we? Three, two, one. <coughs> Can you believe this? I'm Sandy Cheeks, and this is the 2024 Kids Choice. Why the fuck does it look so bad? Oh my god, is this mocap? Okay, so believe it or not, Nickelodeon has made one good move this year, uh, and that is their move towards presenting professional sports programming in a way that's entertaining for kids. They've done it quite a few times now, but I'm sure you saw the countless clips of their broadcast to the Super Bowl where they just kind of filled the whole thing with brain rot. It, it was actually one of the best things I've ever seen. However, the greatest part about it was mocap SpongeBob and Patrick commentating the entire game. Now, I think Nickelodeon saw that this worked 
really well. Like, oh, we can use this to soften the blow really well. So what they've decided to do this year is put all of those actors back in their mocap suits to have the awards in Bikini Bottom with the characters as hosts. Guys, this is such a strategic move. They're using their most iconic and not, it's, it's, I digress. They open up the show with a dance party, okay, which is pretty fun, uh, until they pull out this little number at the end. Put your hands together for Paul Russell! Oh yeah, it's the Boothang guy. Okay, uh, look, with all due respect to the artist and the song, I think I've heard that song more times than I've told my family that I love them. This song came out almost a year ago and they are still <laughs> shoveling this dude his bag. Honestly, major respect. The only shitty part about this is that his in-ear monitor was clearly out of time with the actual track, so the whole thing, uh, I mean, it sounded like garbage. It was a mess. Yeah! Hey! Yeah! Hey! Yeah! <laughs> this is what I came for, man. Doesn't it feel like taking steps back in history, but like in the best way? You know, it, it feels like I'm watching the Kids Choice Awards, but if it was a PS2 game. Oh, cheese balls! I saw some backstage. Oh, 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 I said, oh, and Patrick, come back here. Oh, we okay. got a show. Okay. But you might be right. Something does feel like it's missing. Hmm. Yeah, your oh, eyelashes. Our evening's first presenters are two of Kids' favorite current stars, Bella Porch and Benny Blanco. While you could argue that both of these people are odd choices for the Kids' Choice Awards, I suppose a good chunk of Bella Porch's old TikTok audience is kids. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe they listen to her music now, I don't know. Uh, what is she has that one song, uh, uh, Build a Bitch? To make matters more confusing, uh, they're here to present favorite male voice from an animated movie, and, and they do this bit where Bella gives Benny these, like, voices to act out. Why don't you try an overly dramatic chicken tender? What? Chicken tenders can't speak? What are you talking about? <laughs> Okay, okay. What hey, about- Hey, guys, they're, not, they're not even listening. Uh, it all just kind of isn't making sense. You know, not a single person in this situation seems like they actually want to be here. Uh, the kids included. It's already starting to feel like a forced family gathering. And the winner is- Adam Sandler! Oh shit, okay, this is my part, this is my part. Welcome to the award board year two. Adam Sandler just took home the win for Leo, showing up in classic Adam Sandler attire. His speech was kind of incredible. He just told the kids to be nice to a bunch of people. Always be nice to your mommies. Always be nice to your daddies. Always be nice to your grandmas. Always be nice to your grandpas. Always be nice to your friends. I'm a bit stunned, folks. I gotta say, I, th this must have been a pretty difficult win. Uh, there was some hot competition out there. You know, Jack Black. Jack Black. I, I had my money on him. Can we still pull out of that deal? Yeah? Ha <laughs> ha, poor son of a bitch. I don't care. I don't. I gotta catch you guys up on what's going on here. Uh, they, they've now shoved Adam Sandler into this box with SpongeBob and Patrick so they can sit and banter for a moment because pretty much immediately after, we're thrown right into the next award for favorite, favorite breakout artist. Guess it's still my turn. One of my issues from last year still stands. That issue being nominees that aren't actually very kid oriented. Ice Spice and Tyla really jump out to me here. Y y you know what I mean? Who's listening to that Ice Spice fart song with the whole family? Pretty much everyone on this list is kind of a radio artist, so I guess it makes sense that kids would hear these songs. But hey, Renee Rapp took this one home. Let's see what she had to say. You guys are so cute and so loud, and it's so sweet. Um, thank you, Zembob. Very lovely. Absolutely incredible. Look at that. She was also the first slime of the night, so we're already getting off to a pretty hot start here. So recently, I've been having this issue where I've been standing up to sleep. Um, I don't know why my body just decides to do it uh, once I fall asleep in the bed. Anyway, uh, it's been causing a lot of issues. Well, thank God that I've been reached out to by Helix Sleep, the sponsor for today's video. Helix Sleep provides premium mattresses customized to fit your needs, conveniently shipped to your door. The Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including their award-winning Lux and Ultra Premium Elite collections, the Helix Plus, a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, and the Helix Kids mattress, designed for growing bodies and endorsed by child sleep and medical experts. However, everybody's different, and Helix knows that, okay? 
they care. So they made a sleep quiz that matches your unique body type and sleeping preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Personally, I'm a side sleeper who likes a medium mattress and shares a mattress with my partner. And based on my results, Helix matched me with their Midnight Luxe mattress. I've had my mattress for about a week and already the results are actually kind of insane. Um, I like a really soft uh, mattress, but this one feels like the perfect in-between and I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's It's got these nice lumps that just feel like they caress my body. I don't know if this is like weirdly personal information, but the mattress is nice, okay? I, I can't complain. The best part about all of this is that Helix comes delivered right to your door with free shipping in the US. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up yourself. If it makes you nervous to buy something you haven't tried, Helix has a 100 night sleep trial, so you get more than three months to make sure that you love it. Plus, Helix mattresses have a 10 year warranty and they even offer financing options and flexible payment plans, so a great night's sleep is never far away. And get this, their 4th of July sale is running right now, and it's the perfect time to upgrade. Get this, look at this. Look, you can upgrade your sleep with 30% off an Elite or Lux mattress, plus two free pillows, or take 25% off site-wide. Click the link in the description or the link on the screen to find out more about this limited time offer. Yeah, so far things aren't terrible. Uh, it's a pretty typical Kids' Choice Awards, but it doesn't really stand out. You know, like I said at the beginning, I was harsh towards last year's show, but it, at least it was trying to be something. Now they're just slinging around their grotesquely reanimated, dried out IP. They spend like five minutes talking about the new animated Transformers show. Like, absolutely no one is asking for this. I should rephrase that. I don't care. I'm sure there is a kid out there that cares, but the biggest problem that I have is that they're using this whole, whatever, one and a half, two and a half minute clip as a segment in the show that could be something else. Like Jack Black coming through a fucking, I don't know, him exploding or something. Oh, then look at this, dude. This is really fucked up. Oh, no. I love adventures with you, which is why I'm so excited to be here. There's so much to explore. Yeah, no, that's not Dora. It's so sad, you know? It, it really just feels like a death of culture. Maybe I'm completely out of my mind, you know? Maybe this is genuinely what kids like now, but I just feel like this is such a cold and corporate version of what it used to be. Like, I wish these kids could experience a Jack Black Kids Choice Awards. Check out those palm trees. They okay, all right, get her off the goddamn stage. I don't want to see that shit, man. Can you say best Kids Choice Awards ever? No one said it. Anyway, Soulless Corporate Dora is here to present the award for favorite family TV show. And uh, don't talk. I'm doing this one. This one is not for you. Look, look, he's not even here. What an idiot. Who are you? It doesn't matter who you put next to the winner of this award. It was a clean sweep regardless. In fact, they should have just made this an honorary reward. You already know what I'm talking about, baby. It's Young Sheldon, baby. It's Young Sheldon. It's Young Sheldon, baby! Uh, I didn't know that the Young Sheldon fandom was a real thing. I, I always just thought it was a meme, uh, but apparently it is very real and it is very strong. So I think this award is highly deserved. Is that Brent Rivera and his fucking sister? What are they here to accept? Best social media couple? Oh yeah, baby, I was wrong. Best Kids' Choice Awards ever! This is... This Dude, either they're inserting screams or these kids love young Sheldon. Can someone in the comments tell me if I'm missing out here? Like, genuinely. Oh, wait, hold on. Favorite male creator goes to Mr. Beast. Do you all know why I gathered you here? No. Because I just won a Kid Choice Award. Thank you for the award. Oh, okay, that was kind of quick. He sort of just blew through that one. He must have been scared to show up because they made him descend from the rafters last year. Hey, look, I, I don't blame him. Hey, look, more Nickelodeon actors. Guess they're the hosts now. This part is so sad. They literally just walk through the audience and hand out awards. Hey, you're missing this. Are, are, are you seeing this? No, I'm seeing it. I mean, I mean, what do you want me to say? Look, they're giving an award to Heidi Klum. America's Got Talent won Best Reality TV Show. I, what, what, what do kids even have to pick from when it comes to reality TV? You know what I mean? Oh, here, here they come. 
oh, okay, so it's like um, it's like competition shows. You, you know, see, I feel like they could have clarified that. This guy's fit is absolutely atrocious, by the way. What the fuck is this? Guys, the next award is Best Villain. Look at this. The Kids' Choice Awards have pitted Regina George against Bowser and Fade Rautha. Wh why, why is Dune 2 here? Anyway, this category was presented by Keenan and Kel. Nickelodeon legends, uh, but they just keep making Good Burger references that none of the kids understand. Wow, dude, listen! Layer your life like a burger with joy, peace, and happiness. Whoa! And Bowser wins that one. Jack Black, whatever. Now this part really shocked me. Okay, Jack Black sent in a pre-recorded acceptance speech. Okay, we're talking about Kids' Choice Awards legend, Jack Black. Well, yes, we did still get to see him get slimed. It, it, this just felt so wrong, okay? Kids Choice Awards with no Jack Black is like burger with no sauce. So scan the QR code on the screen and go vote now at votekca.com to choose what kind of cake you want me to throw at Hannah. <laughs> Birthday cake or cheesecake? Cheesecake? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but a, a cheesecake to the face could actually be pretty painful. I mean, the, those things are dense. <laughs> also, look how upset this kid in the red shirt is. He's drenched. Poor guy. Birthday Birthday cake or cheesecake? Let's see the results of the live boat. Four! Thank you, 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 Nickelodeon for the 2024 Kids' Choice Award for Favorite Actor. What was that? Sorry, folks. <laughs> I, I, I'm doing my best to keep up here. I'm, ju I'm just really not sure what's happening anymore, though. Now they're doing this new segment just called Legend. Uh, I believe this is their attempt at replacing the Lifetime Achievement Award, except now it's not an award. It's just Legend. Our very first legend is tennis star Serena Williams, and I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is deserved. I don't know if I'm just making this up because of like the video and I'm just convincing myself, but I, I feel like Serena Williams has actually done a lot for children around the world. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, she also won the Queen of Swag Award in 2015. That feels charged. Thank you all very much. I love you. Serena, no! Oh, usually I wouldn't do this, uh, but when they transition into the next commercial break, this is how they send us off. Coming up, anything can and will happen when Jelly Roll and Heidi Klum hit the stage. Damn, if I haven't heard more facts in my life! I mean, really, what will happen when Jelly Roll and Heidi Klum... Well, we're going to find out right after the worst segment in the entire evening, featuring Bella Porch, Ryan Toy Reviews, Brent Rivera, and his fucking sister. Here he goes. I believe oh, you, bud. Whoa. I love those things. Okay, Whoa. looks like you still got it. Chicken, always good. A boot. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's mine. Thanks. Anything Kids' Choice related in there? Oh, let's see. <gasps> Look. It's Whoa. a Kids' Choice Award. <laughs> it looks like it's the award for favorite social music star, Bella Porch. Social music star. Okay, I swear this is the most nitpicky I'm going to be in the entire video, but is that not the most wildly specific category? <laughs> They're just letting her give a speech now oh from her gosh, seat. Thanks I for the award, to Ryan win. Toy Thank Reviews. So Brent's sister Lexi is about to win the award for favorite female creator. Could you not tell from Brent's incessant childlike filming? Look at him, we're literally watching him tweak out in real time. Like, the, the guy needs to calm down. Cool, glad that section's over. Oh, by the way, the big Jelly Roll Heidi Klum surprise is a marching band and Jelly Roll getting slimed. So that buildup kinda, kinda sucked. Anna Kendrick takes on the award here for favorite female voice actor. Spoiler. <laughs> You don't care. Uh, but I want to go back for a second because we totally glossed over this thing that they've been doing the entire time, which is just handing out an award to someone without even acknowledging any of the nominees. Like, I have to know who else was nominated for Social Music Star, right? Let's see. Uh, Addison Rae, David Kushner, Joe Keery, Madison Beer, Russell, Paul, Boothang guy. Okay, so it's, it's basically people who had popular TikTok songs. I'd also like to take a look at both favorite male and female creator, uh, whatever to everything else. But, but Darman genuinely being considered for favorite creator, like, I feel like I'm going insane. Anyway, Anna Kendrick, uh, I haven't seen her in like 2,000 years. But I'll tell you what, the Trolls franchise has given her solid employment for like eight years now. And honestly, I think that's Nothing pretty you're talking about right now is productive. 
God damn, you're, you're so done next year. This year's musical performance was from the Kid Leroy, and might I say, I didn't mind it at all. I, I thought it was pretty good. They bring out Rita Ora to introduce it, uh, and she says, quote, that she cannot stop listening to the new album. I have not stopped listening to this next performer's album since it dropped earlier this month. And I know it's annoying, guys, I know. Um... But an album hasn't come out yet. Hey, if I didn't know any better, you could probably fool me, though. Okay, guys, hey, come on, guys, guys, come on. Hey, guys, look, look, I'm on your, I'm on your side. It wasn't really hard to follow up last year's confusing little baby performance, though. Uh, you guys remember that? I'm really still not sure what they were thinking with that one. What I find most important about this performance is that the kids actually seem to really enjoy it. I can spot multiple kids who actually seem to be singing along. You know, I don't think any of those kids were going bar for bar with Lil Baby last year. This show so far has been, in a word, confusing. And all of this being said, this really does just feel like a breath of fresh air at the end of a nightmare. Thank you so much to the Kids' Choice Awards. Um, this means the world to me. I'm sending my love and I feel very lucky and very grateful. I love you all so much. Thank you for your love and support, and I will see you soon. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Okay. Buckle up, folks, because for some reason, the Kids' Choice Awards have decided to send us to a commercial break, but not without blowing through 15 awards in one sitting. That, to me, is just purely overwhelming. So I say we just sit here, we do something a little different, and we, we just do a reaction video to all 15 of them, uh, right? Yeah, cool. Uh, okay. Favorite kids TV show. Percy, Percy Jackson. Jackson and I watched that. It was mid. Okay. Just hung out here for can, we, can we all Favorite agree on that? Favorite female TV star. Kids. Olivia Rodrigo. Hold on. So Favorite TV star. Olivia Rodrigo. What was she in on TV? Oh, the High School Musical show. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Wasn't that like a, a really long time ago already? Favorite male TV star. Facts. Family, facts. Yes, you deserve that. Favorite, Favorite movie, movie Barbie. Barbie. Why not Oppenheimer? Favorite show SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants. God damn it! Look, I'm happy for him, okay? But this is like their 25th consecutive win or something. But I mean, facts though. Who's who's gonna beat SpongeBob for favorite cartoon on Nickelodeon? Who will ever beat them? Favorite male sports star? <laughs> Travis Kelsey. <laughs> Favorite gamer? Kai Sinat. Favorite movie actress? Margot Robbie. An icon for young girls everywhere. Let's cut it there. Also because I just, like, I don't care. Some of these have, like, copyrighted music. It's totally ruining my vibe right now. Honestly, I'm done with this. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with this video. You can take over. Fuck you. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for naming Guts your favorite album. I'm so appreciative of everyone who's listened. And thank you so much for voting. It really means the whole world to me. Patrick and Spongebob, you guys are killing it. Oh, Rod, they're the right next to you. Just talk to them. I'm going to be honest, folks. Uh, the rest of the show loses so much momentum. It's insane. They do another award presentation by an animated character. This one goes to Across the Spider-Verse for best animated movie. Nah, I'm going to do my own thing. All right, no, hey, hey, no, enough with the milking, guys. Come on. However, the final award of the night for favorite male artist went to Post Malone. He actually couldn't look worse. What a depressing image to see in the final moments of the show. It's all tied up in a bikini bottom dance number to celebrate the 25th anniversary of SpongeBob. And here I am thinking, that was so boring. I was really waiting that whole time for some sort of major spectacle and like the craziest thing that we got the entire time was the cake thing, which by the way, uh, was completely underwhelming. Let's be real folks, have the Kids' Choice Awards gotten worse from every conceivable angle? Absolutely. Many people on last year's video said things like, oh, of course you don't like it. You're not a kid. And that's true. However, I think anyone could look at this and see how much of a waste of time and money it is. It feels like Nickelodeon doesn't even care about it anymore. And it's heavily reflected in the production. This was an absolute mess. Other than the three almost identical dance numbers and the occasional blast of slime, not a single thing actually happened during this award show. And how sad is that? I mean, this is the one one award show where you want a bunch of crazy bullshit to be happening at all times. Here's my theory, folks. The Kids Choice Awards still have the opportunity to be saved. Not only that, but they have the opportunity to be bigger than they've ever been. The key to saving it, though, is removing Nickelodeon from the helm. 
Because what do kids love now? Social media. Like, I hate to say it, but the Brent Rivera Ryan toy review section felt like the most culturally relevant thing for kids in this entire show. And that's saying something. Uh, you know, do kids like SpongeBob? Absolutely. And they always will. But do you know what kids really like? Fucking TikTok, man! Because of the internet, the minds and interests of today's children have expanded so much that this entire award show could be considered niche to a given child. And with Nickelodeon under a harsh light right now, it sort of seems like the perfect time to regroup and rethink things. Uh, but I don't know. What do you think? Because I've given all of my opinions on the Kids' Choice Awards, okay? You know, like, I, I, my video last year, shockingly, was one of my most polarizing videos ever. And it's about the Kids' Choice Awards. I was talking to Ash about this earlier, but it's interesting because I feel like this video shows not only how wrong I was about last year, but also how right I was at the same time. Right, because I thought last year was so bad, but it was actually so so good in comparison to this year, right? Folks, as always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and leave a comment about your favorite Kids' Choice Awards. What's, what, what's your favorite Kids' Choice Awards memory? Okay? What is it? This was a bit of a differently structured video. Of course, I really enjoyed it, though. So, you know, do everything that you love to do and whatever. And that's all I have for you this time. But until next time... By the way, guys, I wasn't acting. This was Mezcal and... Probably the worst thing you can shoot. Uh, it, it was painful. I almost, uh, I almost threw up. All right. It's like 10 p.m. Good night.